This is going to be a total bias, comic fam. We have to. We have you know to I don't lie to you. Our biases up front. Our bi- oh. biases. My homie made a comic book. <laughs> Eris Quinones. Shout out to him. They did it. Well, Tim is part of Variant Comics, but Eris Quinone has teamed up with multiple individuals with the power of Variant Comics and their team to propel this comicsology exclusive and to make it a reality. And it just concluded, and it's brilliant. This was a fun book. I haven't read too many of these comicsology originals, which is weird because I have not been shy about my love for comicsology, but getting to read this was a fun treat, especially since, you know, we have a... We have a friendship with Eris. So Eris is one of my best friends, and he is uh, the host of Variant Comics, which is known as one of the very few, like under four get this kind of credit in the YouTube space as one of the grandfathers of comic-themed content on YouTube. You know, when you type in, if there's a character that gets introduced in the MCU, if there's any new news about really any major pop culture event as it pertains to Marvel, DC, and independent stuff... It's that channel that people go to to learn about it. You know, the history of videos. video of comic stuff on YouTube, there's a solid chance that you have seen a video from Variant Comics. Absolutely. And Eris teamed up with a powerful team and created an entire comic world. And um, who do we have on this? We have Frank. Frank J. Barbieri and Eris wrote this together. How do you pronounce the artist's name again? (laughs) That was a tough one. Uh, Ruiri? Ruiri? Ruiri. (laughs) Ruiri Coleman does the pencils. And the colors are by Lauren Aff. Affy. And then letters by Taylor Espino- Esposito. Esposito. There you go. And this is a comicsology original. This is something new. You know, we had a handful of creators start making comic books, including Scott Snyder. And Eris's pitch and book was so good that they wanted to put that next to Scott Snyder in the release. I think he was, I think he predated Scott Snyder. I think all the Scott Snyder stuff happened after this. It was kind of like, uh, I think it was alongside to a degree, and there were times that this book performed even higher. Because uh, it's a superhero comic, and I read I read a, one or two of the Scott Snyder series, and those are all different genres, but this is like a pure, pure superhero comic, actually, in more ways than one. It's so, you know, it's a weird way to describe it, but like every time, like when I read it and experienced it first off through mobile, it was very enjoyable. I'm not as big of a digital reader, but... The pacing of the book is so good, which it has to be in a short five issues. And the movement of panels that Comixology sets up for the mobile device, it made this so fun to read. It was like slightly interactive and it felt like there was planning that went into the digital readability. However, although you can't get the single issues, the graphic novel is coming out on trade paperback and I'm excited to read it in that method as well. But it's a modest superhero story. Like... It's, You've used it, that word a couple of times to describe it. I, yeah. I like, I like your, your reasoning behind that. Well, you have, um, it's, it's, a, it's a tribute to comics, man. Like, when do you say, like, when you're reading this, we, we follow Noah Sands, which is this character here on the screen. And Noah Sands is a journalist who, uh, let's see here. Noah Sands is a journalist and his, his, it's his responsibility to write articles about astonishing times superheroes because in the 1970s superheroes emerged and they were living amongst us but now in day-to-day life the quote is people don't look up anymore right we got used to it because which is an interesting way to build this narrative and this world because it's yes it's kind of got some flavors of yeah he's a journalist like peter parker you know we have a character that's very similar to batman you know eris has even said this is like our batman version he was super powerful really cool um we have a focus where the character himself is going through an origin tale and he is the fan of superheroes like we would be. However, the world, people don't like superheroes. So the invincible vibes and the boys vibes that come out of this book, they're very real, but it's more grounded in realism in this story than any of the fantastical narratives that you see in traditional superhero modern day tales. There's a scene early on in issue one where he goes into his editor's office, all excited that he's going to get this new promotion and get a a new story. But his editor basically says the newspaper is kind of sucking. No one's really buying it anymore. People don't really care about superheroes anymore, kids. So you're going to, we're going to have to, you know, let you go. And just that, that scene really hit me because it was like depressing and and real. And you, you like feel his, 
sense of crushing disappointment because he walks in there all happy, like, yeah, I'm about to I'm about to get this raise. Things are looking up. And they're not. Yeah, he's he's a writer for a newspaper that it's it just it feels very realistic and plausible because the community that lives in this society have just given no craps about superheroes for so long that it's a forgotten interest. So we follow a character that's like us in the pages. He collects the action figures. He puts the superhero posters up on his wall. He's a father. He's got a kid. He's got a wife. We get to see their relationship develop. And you want to root for him, but you also are laughing with him because you're geeking out with him as he experiences superhero things. And there's also another layer in here because his dad used to be this same reporter. He used to have the same kind of beat, the superhero. He took over the job, essentially. Right. Back when people kind of cared a little bit more. Back in you know the 80s and the 90s. When his dad was alive. Correct. But now he's got his dad's old job and, and society has kind of just moved on. This is a murder mystery superhero tale. So we have the introduction of someone who is... Gold Rush? Is this is Gold name? Rush. Now, we won't give too much away about this book because everyone can go read this. This is a Comixology original. So if you have the Comixology, you can just go read all five issues right now. This character gets killed brutally. And that's yeah. also really fun that we have, yeah, more grounded, maybe even some would say kind of PG-13 vibes sure. of, of violence. But it does get brutal enough. There's a melted guy right there. And he, he is. Looks pretty crispy. Fully crispy on the floor. Let's zoom in. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, let's get nice, a good shot of that. Nice melty skin. It's beautiful. So you have superheroes that are being killed. The ones that people kind of forgot about. You know, a little Watchmen vibes, anyone? But it's good. This, again, this is like a full tribute to everything Eris loves about superheroes. I'm glad you pointed that out because that was the main influence I felt when reading this. Was There was, there was a lot of Watchmen vibes in the fact that somebody from this old superhero team of, of years gone has been murdered and like... The, the initial plot is who killed this guy. So there's definite Watchmen flavor. But like Tom pointed out earlier, it's got Invincible and Boys, a little Peter Parker spice thrown into the mix. It's definitely a love letter to comics. It's been 15 years since the cataclysm, and most people seem to have forgotten it ever happened. This is a moment where he would lose his father. This is a moment where superheroes would begin to become just like everyday people to most society. I love the the V, the variant logo. It pops up multiple times in this comic. Oh, yeah. Uh, Eris pops up in this comic. I mean, we'll, we'll show that yeah. here. So this is our character. This is Noah Sands. And as we mentioned, he is struggling to keep his job. You want to root for him. But, you know, you have the editor who's giving him crap. And we get introduced to this character here, someone who kind of seems like a washed up hero, but clearly he's agile. He knows some acrobatics. This is... The superhero that is trying to discover what happened to the, you know, the murdered superheroes. Someone's killing off heroes. So, you know, kind of Rorschach vibes here. I think this is the Batman character that Ares was talking about, if I'm not mistaken. And this is. Looking like old hobo there. That's right. Koken. Koken. Yeah, he's like Samurai Batman to a degree. Yeah. It's freaking kick ass. Which is cool. Yeah. That's and, cool. Uh, there's some really cool podcasts about the creation process of this when they were designing the kinds of weapons he utilizes and how he decides to fight. And the way that it was put is this is a character that doesn't need all these weapons. It's the difference of he's gonna he's gonna get you. Like he's gonna take he's gonna take care of the situation. You don't want to fight him. He is a A-lister superhero. However, whether he beats you in five seconds or three seconds is going to be the reason why he has these extra features. You That's know? a terrible choice. Do I get beat up in five seconds or do I get beat up in three seconds? You know, it's like it depends <laughs> on the situation. Yeah. So um, we find out that Koken needs to reach out to Noah to find out what he knows because he knows Noah's dad used to be a journalist and probably has information that he needs. Correct. It's kind of a stretch, but, you know, he's, it's, it's as good of a lead as he can hope for in this moment. That's right. And this character um, starts getting gunned down because, you know, we're, we're in a kind of a weird police state is what it seems like. You know, with superheroes, it's a little bit of, a little bit of I, unrest. If I could make a, like a, a, a criticism, a sure. constructive criticism, I wish there was maybe one or two more issues in this story, if only to kind of flesh out the surrounding world a little bit more. And it like could be said, coming. Like, what is the world? Like, why? Maybe I just read it too fast or something. But like, why? Why are they shooting 
superheroes in this like what what, what is the what is the and they don't even world? know he's a superhero at this point this that's is true. just somebody in the dark well they say he's past curfew i believe so there's yeah. some weird laws going around right and i think that's why this is a it feels like this is a five issue series that is going to have a continuation i hope so because this felt like too, a little too rushed it was it was very short yeah but it, it good short and then you know as this you know, police force tries to take out these individuals, a sword comes out, and then we were we are introduced to an elite superhero that's kind of not been working for a while, but he has been behind the scenes. Yeah. We don't want to give too much away about where the story goes from here, I don't think. But no, no, we're not we're not cool gonna character. get to it. No, but if anything, we should describe uh Koken, because this character, um, Dark Defender of Justice. I really enjoy the art style all throughout this these issues because we get flashbacks. We also go in the mind of Noah at, at one point. We won't give too many you know details away, but being introduced to other superheroes in a short five issues with pacing as good as it is is a tough thing. Yeah, and it's accomplished in this book. I was very impressed every single page. You did good, Aris. You done good, brother. And Frank and Rory. The whole team. <laughs> the whole team did a, did a killer job. The colors are great. The art style changes as we experience it differently page by page. And look at the character design. This right here had a lot of effort that went into it. I can't imagine like, man, I want to make comics, but it's one of those things where there's so much to think about. You actually have to sit down and design a superhero, like yeah. blank page, like go, like yeah, create like something. Now. What are the shoes going to be like? Because right. the shoes are big, you know, it could be a plot device. Who knows? Like to, to the to the little buttons on this guy's back. Like right. all this thought that goes into Almost it like and Geiger. being a breakout comic for Eris, it is just really cool. I'm really proud of him. Yeah, it's a cool moment. Yeah. Kind of pissed that I waited so long to read it. There we go. Comic fam, comicsology. Get yourself some astonishing times and make sure to support Eris over on Variant Comics. It's a great YouTube channel. Um, this is a, a really cool shot of Koken because he shoots these um, like ninja stars out of his wrists. And his sword out of the handle has like this thing that zips out the handle. So his he weapons have multiple weapons within them. Yeah, very it's bad. It's cool. Man. It's very, very cool. Yeah. All right. Um, hopefully we can get Eris actually on the show to chat about this because I'm a, I'm fascinated by the creative process. I know it's different with everyone, but, you know, being that he's a friend, I'm sure, he, and he's been on the show before, I'm sure he'll come on and, and tell us about That'd his cool. experience. I've never talked to him. I'd like to. He made a whole graphic novel. Come on, Eris. Like we, we got homies in the community who make comic books. And Weird. it's an accomplishment, and it's amazing. But some homies have made full graphic novels. That is a accomplishment. That is very tough to do. Send them in to us, by the way, if you want us to like read them. Maybe hand them out in the mail call or something. I don't know. I know we can about get, it on the show. Oh, we're gonna be getting some, you know, for the when we need, Dark we need Horse comic brings it karma. Up. We do. We need comic karma. 